Now stay tuned to the following radio broadcast. You're listening to the Victory Station, AM 1360. We're glad you chose us. Thank you. It's Impact with the Florida Star, the largest, oldest, and most read African-American newspaper in Northeast Florida and South Georgia. And now, here's the host, the publisher of the award-winning Florida Star, Clara McLaughlin. This is OPL. Here in publication in Northeast Florida, in Georgia, and a clerk, please be welcome. Whereas newspapers have historically been a vital, indispensable component of any and all freedom-loving nations in the modern world, and the free press traditionally has been a purveyor of news as well as a vehicle for the dissemination of opinion and dissent. As students of American history know, it was John Peter Zenger, a New York printer with his lawyer Alexander Hamilton, who in the very famous 1730 revival case ensured that freedom of the press would be incorporated into the First Amendment of the Constitution. The Florida Star was founded on April 15, 1951 by Eric O. Simpson to provide Jacksonville with its own African-American newspaper. The Florida Star focused on news that impacted Jacksonville's African-American community when other newspapers and news media ignored or minimized African-American and civil rights stories. During the 1950s and 60s, the Florida Star was in the vanguard in championing civil rights in Jacksonville. It prided the government on embedded Jim Crowism. It endorsed African-American political candidates and kept the readers in the community apprised of boycotts and sit-ins. Through the years, the Florida Star has been known for its crime reporting. Today, the Florida Star has extensive coverage of news, politics, fashion, religious news, sports, Greek organizations, obituaries, opinion columns, and more. When Eric Simpson died in 1994, his wife, Mary Wooten Simpson, took the helm of the newspaper and under her watch, the paper expanded its staff coverage and circulation. In the aftermath of her death, managing editor Erica Simpson, Erica and Mary Simpson's daughter, led the newspaper. In 2002, Clara McLaughlin purchased the Florida Star and is currently serving as its publisher. In January 2007, the Florida Star launched a Georgia edition, the Georgia Star. In 2003, Eric Simpson was posthumously inducted into the Florida Press Association Hall of Fame, the first African American to be inducted. Today, 65 years after its founding, after weathering lawsuits and arson attacks along the way, the Florida Star remains a vital, instrumental, cohesive presence in Jacksonville's African-American community. The Star is linked to Jacksonville's growth and confidently looks forward to continued growth and progress in the years ahead. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Jacksonville, the City Council does hereby recognize and honor the Florida Star on the occasion of its 65th year as a newspaper and publication in Northeast Florida and Georgia and extends its best wishes for continued success in the years ahead. Adopted by the Council, August 9, 2016. Yes, we're here. Thank you so much to the council members and colleagues. I really appreciate it. And, and I just have to echo the words that uh, council member Brown said when he said that, first of all, we just have to thank each of you for seeing the value in recognizing the Florida Star for 65 years of service here in Jacksonville. And the other thing that we have to do is as Councilmember Brown said, we have to remember that we have trailblazers right here in our city. Trailblazers who are known throughout this nation, who have put Jacksonville on the map in a very positive way. And we, um, we have this opportunity to recognize Clara McLaughlin right here today, 65 years for carrying on the legacy of the Florida Star, not allowing that newspaper to go by the wayside, 
but making sure that it continues to make its mark, not only in Jacksonville, but also in Georgia. So um, I, I just want to tell you a little bit about her if you don't really know who this little lady is, because she's just a tiny little lady, but she carries such a punch. She carries a lot of power. Um, she, she is um, uh, from the Gainesville area, so she's, she's pretty much local. She's an author, she's a newspaper, um, a publisher, but she is also the first African-American female in the United States of America to become founder and a major owner and CEO of a network-affiliated television station. She did that in Longview, Texas. It was a CBS affiliate, and um, you know when when I, I look at Miss um, McLaughlin and think about all the things that she has done. When she went to Howard University, they did not have a school of journalism. This woman is responsible for bringing a school of journalism to Howard University, a university that is well known throughout this nation and this world. But this is the little lady with all of that might. A lady we have right here in our community. Um, uh, Clara has a radio show that she does called Impact that is on uh, WCGL um, 1390-1360. And she has also launched uh, Star TV, which is on 18.2, that is on digital, which is a minority community show. She continues to make strides here in Jacksonville. She is a mentor to so many young people who want to go into journalism. But you know what? She's a mentor to me. Not only because of journalism, but because of the person that she is. And she is a mentor to all in this city. And we are just so thankful. And I am so happy to be able to present this to you today. Clara, to you. Here, here. Before you all leave, we have a few council members who wanted to share their thoughts. Council, you do Thank you, Madam President, Madam President. First of all, I want to congratulate Father Stone on 65 great years. You know, the Father Stone was our people. It was a community paper, just like Councilman Brown said, Councilman Gaffney. Uh, I wasn't born on Cleveland Road, but Fort Fish Street was really close. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a little boy, my next door neighbor to tell me every Thursday, Go get me a Father Star. So he gave me 50 cents. A quarter for the Father Star, he gave me a quarter to go down there. So every Thursday I had a quarter to go back home and stuff like that. But I want to thank you for your service and thank you for your meeting. And you have just a great thing for the city of Jacksonville. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair and the Chair. Uh, I want to congratulate the little lady that can and could and did. And uh, I grew up with the Florida Star. I was born and raised with Liberty and Ashley. You're only just six years younger or seven years younger than me. But uh, I want to congratulate the Simpson family for all that y'all have done for this city. You certainly have had a star in, in Jacksonville's crown. I uh, remember way back when, when the Times Union had their quote unquote colored section. But y'all won't beat that by a mile. And everything that you published and all the news that was fit to print. And I congratulate y'all. We're very thankful for you having to stay in power because I know it's been struggling off and on throughout those years, as all newspapers are today. But thank you for, for keeping the faith and staying in Jacksonville and continuing to expand in, in the uh, media as you have done. And to all of y'all, thank you for being a part of our great city. Thank, thank you, you, John. Councilman Brown. Thank you, Madam President. I, too, understand this is personal for me as involved in uh, as we talked earlier, but definitely congratulations on the 65 years. Um, we all know, we say that knowledge is power. You provided our community uh, a lot of information, a lot of knowledge for 65 years, and even more than that. Um, but, but more <coughs> important, I think it's always good when uh, information can be shared through your eyes. To our community. Uh, sometimes, and I think uh, Council Missouri alluded to it, uh, you may hear it a different way. And, and that's the important, importance, I believe, of having 
far as stuff. We had a chance to hear it the way it is, the way it was. And so um, I thank you for that. And I personally thank you, even with my journey, assisting me every step of the way. Um, and, and that means a lot. Because I can tell you that um, you know, we said that she's a, a small giant. And that she is. That she is. And, and, when she looked within the bowels of community, and not just the African American community, I want to be real clear with that. You know, it extends far beyond our boundaries as, as a race of people. And, and, and I don't want that to get lost out there. I mean, it transcends across every boundary. Um, but when she recognizes, and I'll close with this, when she recognizes talent, uh, leadership, she herself will get behind those individuals and make sure that they're able to reach their destiny. You know, so that I appreciate you for it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Gaffney. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, and my colleagues, they just said everything that I thought was, I thought was accurate that they said. said. But what I challenge the councilman, but I challenge Jacksonville, the floor was stopped has its own history. And what I love about the Florida Star is often we can wait about the, and read out the newspaper, but we always look forward when we're going to get a story that we believe will be accurate or fitting to what we thought was happening. And that's the knowledge of what situation in this city. But I ask that we reach out to the Florida Star because it's not just a, 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 a TV, uh, TV, television, uh, paper, but more as it's news, it's information. And what I love about them, we often, we, we choose not to go bigger stations, they, they, are, they, they don't mind going into the neighborhood and to the real estate community and getting the adequate story sometimes that the news media don't want to write. Uh, but I want to thank, I want to thank you for what y'all do. I want to thank uh, that guy who take all those pictures that y'all allow you to take because he's everywhere in Jacksonville, and I'm running from him sometimes. And I'm getting from him. Uh, thank you for having Frank because he's a man after a, a true story, but more than after Jacksonville Hard. And thank y'all again. Councilman Dennis. Uh, thank you for your president. Uh, I just want to just uh, tell you, um, just echo everything that uh, my colleagues have said today, but just to tell you a, a little more, um, your paper over 65 years, is, it, it just isn't a Jacksonville paper. Um, you know, uh, my, uh, my mother's side of the family, she had uh, five other brothers and sisters, and they lived all around the country. And when we used to get together for family reunions, they would tell us the updates of Jacksonville because they had their subscription mailed to them all around the country. So the paper just wasn't a Jacksonville paper. It's a national paper. And because of your publication, they kept up with all the happenings in Jacksonville. I want to tell you, thank you for that. That's right. Thank you all very much. And I forgot to say the Bahamas as well. And if you want to introduce yourself right away. Oh, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Greg Willow Mill, uh, he does radio. Opio is the Opio psychology doctor, but he's a lawyer from Howard University also. <laughs> and he is the general manager. Frank, everybody knows him. Everybody knows Everybody him. knows Lizzie Frank and his hat on. <laughs> he's got the work star. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And Denise Williams, she's also a new photographer. She's been with about a year. Okay. And it's Jefferson Hughes, but tell his son, because he wants to be a part of it. And he wants to be an interviewer. Thank you. Oh, just 12. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And I thank all of you so much. Thank you so much. I can't tell you. I'm in tears. I don't want to start crying in front of you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. This is OPO. I hope you enjoyed another episode of Impact. It is time to get out there and vote. You make sure you get out there because it matters. Continue to pick up a copy of the Florida Star newspaper as well as check us out on Star TV. Uh, again, thanks for all the support and congratulations to the Florida Star. This is OPO.